My expectations were insanely high. Um, <laughs> this was, I think this might have been my, when, when it was. Tarantino's yeah, movie moved out, I was like, this is, this, this is my like movie. Years. And uh, I'm here to tell you that this movie is really, really, really good. And I don't think great. And I'm working through that. I've only seen it one time. Mm-hmm. And it, the reason that I don't feel that it's great, very simply, and we can t- we'll talk in great detail about what is in this movie and what works and, and the changes that are made and the way that it evolves the previous Mad Max films, is that while it is an incredible accomplishment, again, of this collision, of the, you know, the physical, practical, and the digital, the, there are four major set pieces in Mad Max Fury Road. There are four major set pieces in this movie. There is some pretty amusing performances in this movie, the same way that there were in the last few Mad Max films. There's this real sense of like epic scale and storytelling. But it's just a little bit too similar to the last movie and not as good. And I don't really know. I, 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 I'm still trying to wrap my head around why he wanted to make this movie. Like what it was about the story of this film which has some interesting contours, but feels very iterative on a lot of things he's done, not just on the Mad Max movies, that holds it back. And I've been been reading reviews of the film, and I've been looking at people's responses, and people have been saying, it's not only as good as Fury Road, it's better. And I can't really figure out where that opinion is coming from. I agree with you. I mean, it's undeniable what George Miller does. Like, it's just, it's like, and it's still, and, you know, I, there were concerns about the CGI after the first trailer and I raised my eyebrow and it, you know, it looks beautiful and amazing and the set pieces are just, they're just flipping stuff over and blowing stuff up. And Two in this film in particular that yeah. are the wowest of wows you can get from that kind of work. Totally. I, I think that, I guess structurally and visually, you're right, it is very similar to Fury Road. And then I think the ways that it adjusts it don't, didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. And I think narratively, it's sort of reaching its limit. Yes. And um, I th- one of the performances in particular, I, re- I really liked, but I was like, okay, so you're just like doing a different movie now. This mm-hmm. is very, very strange and is taking away from everything else that the, that the movie commits to. So I found it, I guess, maybe not disjointed, but there were a couple different movies in it somehow. I think that Basically, every time the movie is like it's set piece time, basically like when the abduction starts, I'm very, I was very locked in and engaged. Yeah. And when the movie slowed down, and this is very different from Fury Road, and was sort of showing us the world a little bit more deeply, I kind of lost, I wouldn't say I lost interest, but I felt much less connected to the to the movie. And I wonder if that is like a, a difficulty of trying to t- make a story like this more epic than it already is. You know, like that short time frame for most of these movies that take place over the series of days, trying to make this more expansive. I wonder how audiences are, are going to feel about that. I think the people who are Mad Max psychos, just in many ways, just an extension of big pick psychos, mm-hmm. will be incredibly excited by the set pieces. And then I, I didn't mind the first hour, I would say, of exposition, which is... I mean, maybe hour is too much, but but so little Furiosa, mm-hmm. who is played by Alila Brown, who plays young Furiosa, she's very good. You know, you put a young kid in peril, and I'm invested. You know, I'm just like, oh no. Um, and that held my attention for a while. I guess also because that at least is different than Fury Road. This right? this first sequence, which I find really, really, I thought it was really cool, and I look forward to seeing it again. Yes, is basically just a motorcycle chase across the desert. And so you've got these abductors who are, um, you know, four or five guys who live at the Citadel who have taken uh, Furiosa. And then her mother hops on a motorcycle and chases after her. She's played by Charlie Frazier, who we last saw on Anyone But You. She was uh, Glenn Powell's ex-Australian fling. Mm -hmm. And that scene is unlike anything in any of these movies. It is much more sort of like magisterial. Like it's very beautiful and very uh, sort of subtle. For an action sequence, it's quiet. The score is sort and of like quietly churning and thumping and percussive, but not that like doom that you tend to hear. There are motorcycles, but it's less machinery and more people. Yeah. Uh, based because you're also, it, it is like a mother trying to protect her child, which is a slightly different valence than the other. I mean, I guess he's always trying to protect some child and avenge, you know, his child, but... 
it, it's a, it's a new version of it, right? I really thought that that first scene was really the one that felt new and different to me, and exciting and uh, engaging. Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, um, not that not that the others aren't hugely exciting and engaging, but it also fit. I bought those narrative stakes, which isn't which isn't hard with like small child right. mom. Right. It's it, you know? it's very easy to get emotionally invested in the movie early on. Um, from there, we start to learn a lot more about Dementis and we see his relationship to the Wasteland and the Citadel and how what he aspires to and what he wants versus what is happening in the society. You can see that Morton Joe is like much younger, played by a different actor than in the previous film, how he is starting to really control natural resources in that space. Right. We get this hint towards the, um, the breeders, you know, the women who are saved in Fury Road. Uh, and then very not, I shouldn't say very quickly, but fairly quickly, the movie moves through the introduction of all of these spaces. And then we go to a more modern time where Furiosa, after escaping or being traded by Dementis to uh, Immortan Joe, mm-hmm. becomes a part of the world at the Citadel. Right. She learns but to she work spends, inside the machinery she there. She a long time in the cage with Dementis, roaming around. She does. Longer than I expected. Um, I kind of expected for it to be that prologue scene and then cut to Anya Taylor-Joy. And you do get a while of Lil, Fur- Lil Furiosa in like a in a clown cart, not saying anything and following Dementis around. And and this, that, that long stretch at the beginning, followed by an, another longer stretch um, in the middle of the movie, makes this movie two hours and 25 minutes, which mm-hmm. makes it the longest of the Mad Max movies. Yeah. I think this was a mistake. I agree. Uh, I don't think it, like, radically hurts the film, but the Mad Max movies are really lean, and they've all been getting longer and longer. The first one's, I think, 93 minutes. The second one's 91 minutes. The third one's, mm, I think, like, an hour 45. Ma- Mad Max Fury Road, one of the most epic movies of the 21st century, is a shade over two hours. This movie is, it it is kind of suffering from that same bloat well, that we're feeling yeah, a lot of these movies and having. I think, and all of the scenes that we're talking about are places where Chris Hemsworth and the Dementis character really get certainly a lot more time than Max and Tom Hardy get in Fury Road. And it, this is a, it's, this is a two-hander, mm-hmm. um, even though it's called Furiosa. And to some extent, I understand that because it's setting up like a final showdown between these two people, but it's, it is serving two, it's trying to serve two characters at the same time, like to be about both Furiosa. And then it's like, I, th- I think that's my other issue, not issue with Dementis, because I think Chris Hemsworth is very funny and very alive, but like you can feel the movie being like, okay, so maybe this is his movie. For a while. 100%. And and I think some of that is the performance, and he's just undeniably charismatic. But the movie's also like, oh, okay, but but this is kind of interesting, and and I'm going to go with this for a while while Furiosa just sits in a cage. And th- to not be able to make that choice, I think, adds to the runtime, obviously, but also some of the tonal confusion. Thank you.